today we will learn something new and interesting. Let us begin by reading these two sentences. Sara jumps from the stairs. They jump from the stairs. Now in both the sentences here, what are the verbs? In the first sentence, jumps is the verb. And in the second sentence, jump is the verb. Now both these forms of verbs have been made from the base verb jump. And you will see that the verbs in both the sentences portray a tense. What is the tense portrayed here? Present tense. Not only do they portray a tense, they also agree with the subject. So we have used the singular form of the verb with the singular subject Sara and the plural form of the verb with the plural subject they. So what can we say? We can say that the verbs in present tense agree with the subject. Now let us look at these two sentences. Sara jumped from the stairs. They jumped from the stairs. Now in both these sentences, what are the verbs? Jumped. So jumped represents a tense. What tense? It represents the past tense. So we can say that jumped in both the sentences is the past tense form that has been used. So we see that sometimes the verb changes according to the grammatical tense, person and number. So in all these sentences here, the base form of the verb jump has been used in various forms to portray a tense, the present tense or the past tense and it agrees with the subject in person and in number. So such verbs are known as finite verbs. So what are finite verbs? Verbs that show agreement with the subject both in person and in number and indicate a grammatical tense are known as finite verbs. Now let us read these two sentences. Sarah likes to jump. They like to jump. Now what are the verbs in the sentences here? Let us see. Now in the sentences here, Sarah likes to jump. They like to jump. We see that likes and like are verbs which not only portray a tense, but they also agree with the subject both in person and in number. Hence, likes and like are finite verbs. But we see that to jump is also representing an action in both the sentences. Hence, to jump are also verbs. But how do we form this verb? We have used to along with the base verb jump. So we get to jump. In both the cases, to jump remains the same. It does not change based on the subject. Now, in the sentences here, Sarah liked to jump. They liked to jump. Liked, we have seen, are finite verbs which are representing past tense and are agreeing with the subject. But we see that to jump in this case also does not change. And how have we formed to jump? We have added to with the base verb. So we see that in all the four sentences, to jump does not change. It does not portray any tense and it does not agree with the subject. So we see that it does not change form according to the subject, number and person and it does not indicate any tense. Such verbs are known as 
non-finite verbs. So to jump in all the sentences is the non-finite verb. Now remember that while each sentence portrays a tense, the non-finite verb does not portray any tense. So what are non-finite verbs? Non-finite verbs do not indicate any tense and do not change with the subject. Now let us see this example. Mom is cooking in the kitchen. Now what is the verb in this sentence? Our verb here is, is cooking. Now this verb is made up of two parts. The auxiliary verb is, which is telling us the time of the action. And the main verb, cooking, which is telling us that the action is in progress. So is cooking together is referring to a particular action and is cooking is also showing us the tense. Hence, this verb is a finite verb. Now if we say they were cooking in the kitchen, then were cooking is together referring to a particular action. It is referring to an action in the past Hence, it is referring to a particular tense. Hence, verb cooking is also a finite verb. Similarly, if we say mom will be cooking dinner in the evening, then what is our auxiliary verb here? Will be and our main verb is cooking. And together, both these verbs are referring to a particular action and is portraying a tense, which is the future tense. Hence, will be cooking is our verb in the sentence, which is a finite verb. Now, you might say that cooking does not change in any of the sentences. So, why is it a finite verb? Now, remember that cooking alone does not refer to a particular action or a tense. Both the parts of the verbs, as in the auxiliary verbs and the main verbs, in every case here, refers to the particular action. So, if we say is cooking or were cooking or will be cooking, only then can we refer to an action in totality. Hence, is cooking, were cooking, will be cooking are all finite verbs. But if we say mom loves cooking on Sundays or mom loved cooking on Sundays. In that case, in both the sentences here, we have two verbs, loves and cooking. In the second sentence, loved and cooking. Now, are the verbs here referring to one particular action? No, loves is referring to a particular action. And cooking is referring to another action. Similarly, loved is referring to a particular action. And cooking is referring to another action. So in both the sentences here, the two verbs are referring to two different actions. Now, in these sentences, loves is changing depending on the subject. You can see here. And it is portraying two different tenses, whereas cooking is remaining the same for both the tenses and is not changing with the subject. Hence, loves and loved are finite verbs, whereas cooking remains the same in both the sentences. So, cooking here in these two examples are non-finite verbs. Now we have two more examples. The window pane was broken yesterday. Dad will repair the broken window pane today. Now let us take the sentences one by one. In the first sentence, the window pane was broken yesterday. 
Now, what is the verb in this sentence? Was broken. It is made up of two verbs. The auxiliary verb was and the main verb broken. Are they referring to two different actions or one action? Both the verbs together are referring to the same action. So, it is the finite verb. Now, in the second sentence, Dad will repair the broken window pane today. Will repair is referring to a particular action together. And will repair is a finite verb because it will change according to the subject and it is portraying a tense. But there is another verb in this sentence. Broken is a form of the verb that has been used in this sentence. And this verb is a non-finite verb because it will not change according to the subject and it does not portray any tense. Now let us do this exercise. Identify the verbs and state whether they are finite or non-finite. I like going out in the evenings. What are the verbs in this sentence? Like, going. Now, are both these verbs referring to two different actions or the same action? So, like is referring to a particular action and going is referring to another action. So, they do not refer to the same action and like will change according to the subject and is portraying a tense. Hence, like is a finite verb. But going does not portray any tense. Hence, going is a Non-finite verb. I am meeting my friend tomorrow. What is the verb in this sentence? Am meeting. Am is the auxiliary verb. And meeting is the main verb. Together they are referring to the same action. So, am meeting together is the finite verb. Scolding is not a good idea. What are the verbs in the sentence here? Scolding is a form of the verb. And is. Now scolding does not refer to any tense. Hence scolding is the non-finite verb. And is is the finite verb here. So what did we learn today? We have learned that verbs can be finite or non-finite. Now finite verbs show agreement with the subject and change form depending on the number and person. They indicate a tense whereas non-finite verbs do not show agreement with the subject and do not change form based on the number and person. They do not indicate any tense. Now remember that every verb can be used either in a finite or non-finite way. Non-finite verbs need a finite verb to make the sentence complete. This is a very important point that you need to remember. Now at first, you might find finite verbs and non-finite verbs a little confusing. But I am sure that if you practice, you will master them in no time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get all learning resources as per ICSC, CBSC, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5,000 amazing lectures across maths, science, English and social science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace 
with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions, get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests, performance analysis with actionable feedback, personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So learning at Delta Step is not just fun and easy, it is also rewarding. So register for free now.